Today's video is sponsored in part by Vendu. This looks yummy. It looks hot. I love my coffee to like burn my mouth, so this is good. It is a cold day today. My aim for today is to just take my time and enjoy the process. I've had a couple weeks off from thrifting and I've had some productive time. So I really just wanna enjoy, take my time and come home with a few quality pieces. That would make me really happy. Weather here has been just crazy. Yesterday it was in the low teens and just incredibly cold. Today it's supposed to get up into the 50s, which is, you know, this is like sunbathing weather in Boston in February. So I'm pretty excited about that. It's a nice day to be out. I headed right over to the section of the store where they tend to have nicer brands and mark items up. The yellow tags are $19.99, the blue are $12.99, and the orange tags are $14.99. So you can see the types of brands that they are marking up. I always like to get a lay of the land and see what they're pricing higher. This is a store that was historically my favorite. It's now pretty hit or miss. I do manage to find some good pieces today. These are all sports bras priced at $7.99. These are uh, leggings that they have priced up. So you can see those are $12.99. These Kate Spade pants are $14.99. Uh, nothing that really piques my interest. I do find one item here that I'm very excited about that I will share with you in the haul portion at the end. But see, they have Target brands priced up and Nasty Gal as well. So I do like to check these things out just to like see where they're at with pricing before I start searching. Okay, fun fact, I've never bought a pair of dojos. Every time I find them, and this was no exception, they're either priced up, which they were here, they were priced at $20, and these are also hemmed, and the bottom hem is kind of a mess, and I have found that to be true on a couple pairs that I have found, so I'm still on the hunt for my perfect pair of dojo jeans. All right, these were not marked up, these were Madewells, but they were an older tag, and they had some pretty bad puckering, and I don't tend to do as well with the colored denim. This is the dress section that I'm just peeking through here. I see this really pretty vintage dress, but there's really no markings on it. I couldn't find a label or anything, so I put that back. The dresses here are priced up also. A lot of their dresses are $10 or $16, so I really have to love a dress in order to pick it up here. My shoe game at the store used to be stellar, but recently it has been not so great. I liked these Zara shoes. They were this gorgeous mustard color, um, but there was actually a lot more wear than they're even showing in the footage, so I put those back. I think their shoes are now $5.99. They used to be just $4.99, which was incredible. Um, these Paul Green shoes, I think I'm gonna buy. I go back and forth. I end up leaving them behind because they just didn't excite me. I have had a couple pairs of Paul Green that have just sat forever. These Tory Burch were just totaled. Um, I did not pick these up. Today I'm really not looking for any projects or things that I can go home and DIY or fix up. I'm really just looking for things that are exciting to me that'll be either a fast flip or bring me a really good profit. So I pass on a lot of things that, you know, maybe even a year ago I would have picked up or six months ago. Being home for two weeks straight and just going through old inventory and death piles has really made me selective out at the thrift store. This is a Pendleton short shirt in the men's section that is really nice, but it's loaded with moth holes, unfortunately. It was a really cute shirt. I would have definitely grabbed it. Just a quick look through the men's shirts. 
The next piece just caught my eye when I was walking by. I was in the kids section, a place I normally don't look too closely at, but this was just such a standout piece and I noticed it was vintage, really inexpensive, so I grabbed that and I researched later and what I found out about it was great. Stop number one was okay. I found a couple nice things that I'm really excited to share with you. I may have shown them in the footage, um, but they have no public restrooms and your girl had to pee so bad. And I'm like, you really won't let us use the bathroom? And they're like, no, sorry, COVID. I'm like, okay. It's just the inconsistency that drives me crazy in my state, at least. I had to leave. I went to Dunks, used the restroom, and now I'm at my second location. The other thing that was a little bit of a downer there, which maybe I'll go back, is um, they didn't do any new racks. And this place brings out really good stuff on their racks. So I might come here for a little bit and bounce back. I think I'm just going to keep thrifting the day away. Okay, next stop. I really liked all of these coats, these wool double-breasted coats. I believe they were all made by J. Crew, but they were all older and priced at $20. And since we are heading out of winter and into spring, I have a ton of jackets, so I decided to leave those behind. I liked this piece by Garnet Hill, um, the dolman sleeves. I was actually considering this for myself but it was just a little too plain, as was this chaser shirt, also an extra large, also thought about it for myself, but these were both $7.50 and neither one of them I thought would bring the return that I wanted. This I thought was a Barefoot Dreams piece and I was so disappointed when it wasn't. This was a pretty quick stop. I think I was here for about a half an hour. But I did find a couple cute accessories as well as a really nice velvet jumpsuit from J. Crew. I'll show you soon. Okay, a lot has happened since we last met. I went to a second stop, which I did pretty well at. Didn't get a lot of stuff, maybe like five or six items. Now I'm going back to my original place and hopefully they have some new racks out. I'm gonna take my time and I'm gonna stay until I have to pee again. And then we'll go from there, okay? <laughs> All right, here we go. I was so upset when I noticed that this Love Moschino sweatshirt, somebody had literally pulled the heart off of it. You could see some of the stitching and the glue left over from where the heart used to be. It was so strange. I had to leave that behind, sadly. Then I found this Aritzia brand, Babaton, sweater with some excessive pilling, but it was such a nice piece that I decided to take it home with me once they charged me only $5 for it. This was a talking mother goose toy that I was really interested in. It was $19.99. I wasn't sure if it worked. And after researching it pretty quickly, I saw that the comps were just all over the place. And depending on whether you had the books or the cassette that went with it, there was an adapter. Some were sold in box. Uh, there were just too many variables that may have gone against me. So I decided to leave it behind for the $20 that they were charging. But you can see in the comps, I mean, some of these went for over $100 or a best offer was accepted, but always fun to look at new stuff. But that's all, all my shopping. All right, everybody, we are back from thrifting. It felt so good to be out. It truly did. I had a couple bumps in the road along the way. My ex favorite used to be favorite, wish it was still my favorite <laughs> store. Uh, they didn't bring out any new inventory, which is so rare, but I did find some really tremendous pieces. I got this grandpa sweater and it's just got all the fun fall colors, even though it is the middle of February. I feel like the pattern really stands out and this is what I really love. I love this combination. It was $7.99 for this hat, which is more than I would typically pay for a hat, but it was new with tag and it is Lucky Brand, and it's 100% wool, and it's got this great beading around the rim, the brim, I should say. It's a beautiful color. I mean, this is like a fall dream. If I, if I had any place to wear this hat, I would keep it, um, but it really looks good with, you know, just basic black with jeans and stuff too, but it does pick up on some of the colors here. I have this priced at $39. Probably gonna be somewhat firm on that price. I don't think I would sell this for any less than 30, but I'm hoping for around that $32, $35. It already has a few likes on it. It is so nice. Do you need to go out? This young lady has been very high maintenance, right? I'm gonna let her go potty. We'll be right back.
back from our break. I want to mention that when I was thrifting, I was trying to keep a couple things in mind. If the item wasn't going to bring me high profit, I wanted to make sure that it was something that would be a fast flip. If it wasn't going to be a fast flip or if it was just something I was willing to sit on for a little bit, I mean, hoping all of these things sell relatively quickly. And by quickly, I mean within two or three months. But in general, I'm looking for items that will sell north of, say, $35. That's kind of my sweet spot right about now. So keep that in mind as I'm going through things. One of the things I'm really trying to do is just broaden my knowledge of brands. So every time I can go out and do a little research, bring home a few brands that are new to me, which I definitely did today, it makes me happy. So this was one of them, this Nisolo. You can see the tag in there. These are just gorgeous sandals. They're very simple, very minimalist, classic. The leather is really soft. It's leather sole, leather upper as well. These are a size eight and you know, I'm hoping for that $35 or more. I have these priced above $50, I'm pretty sure, based on the comps. I think these retail for about $150. So I did um, price them a little bit high. They have one like on them so far. Also, all of these items will be listed in my Poshmark closet. I will link that below for you. So if you're hunting for my closet, it's just at Lori Boston found on Poshmark. And I will link that in the description for you. When I was out shopping, I had initially thought that I was going to wear this. I actually put on darker lipstick and I tried this on and it's actually so beautiful, but then I really wanted to wear the hat and this grandpa sweater was just like calling my name. I just wanted to be comfy for this haul. But look at the sleeves on this Dolan top. This is Dolan, which is a brand sold. I think this is a house brand at uh, Anthropology. I'm pretty fussy about this style, about this brand, I should say, but how beautiful is this top? It's like a scarlet red with a split neck. It's got this little puff sleeve here and just these incredible, incredible sleeves gathered at the wrist and it's a size extra large. I mean, this was just a real winning combo for me. I thought this blouse was absolutely gorgeous. Um, I think this is priced around 38 or $40. It's so beautiful, I loved it. This is a Bowden sweater. It's almost like a cropped blazer in a sweater cardigan form. It's this mustard yellow in really great condition and it has this beautiful detailing down the front and there are no buttons. So this is just meant to be worn open. Bowden has a, a pretty strong sell-through rate in my closet and so it is definitely a brand that I keep my eyes on. I don't pick up all Bowden. I pass on a lot of basic Bowden, but I thought this sweater was really nice. I want to take a quick minute to thank today's sponsor, Vendu. I did something different with Vendu and I'm excited to share it with you. Because I had such fantastic vintage pieces in this particular haul, I decided it is time to get on Depop. I have so many items that I look at and I say, I wonder how that would do on Depop. I wonder if this would sell on Depop. Depop. I wonder if I'd get more money for that on Depop. And then I never list and I have this incredible service. Vendu cross post to I think nine different platforms, maybe 10 now. You can cross post to eBay, Mercari, Kittison, Grailed, Poshmark. I know I'm missing some. There are so many. Depop. There are just so many platforms. You name it, they're probably on it. I really just feel like Vendu is a way that you can scale your business without having to increase your inventory. If you're going to go through the trouble of purchasing something, cleaning it, steaming it, measuring it, photographing it, keeping it in your inventory, drafting it and listing it to one platform, why not spend an extra 30 seconds to two minutes to cross post that to as many platforms as you can. My main platform is Poshmark. eBay has thousands and thousands of more users than Poshmark does. And there are buyers on Etsy that would be more excited about a piece than my buyers on Poshmark. To have a place where you can just blast everything out to a bunch of different platforms, and then once it sells, you just click a button, mark what it sells for on one platform, and it automatically removes them from other platforms. It gives me such peace of mind that I'm not gonna double sell something. Vendu has been a huge game changer for me, so I would love for you guys to try it out. I do have a discount code. If you click the link in my description, you'll receive 25% off your first month of service 
and let me know how you like it. Leave in the comments if you use Vendu now, what your thoughts on it are on it, if it's changed your business. For me, any sale that I make on a platform other than Poshmark is a bonus. It pays for itself. They have a variety of price points. You can check out their price list and you can find the plan that works best for you. The next item is something that I picked up that I'm hoping will be a quick flip and has a really good sell-through rate, even though it's going to be low dollar amount and it was low cost. So I picked up this The Mountain tie-dye t-shirt. Uh, I, I don't think I have a single mountain t-shirt left in my inventory. They always sell between $18 and $25. I wanted to try this because it's youth and I've never sold youth the mountain brand and I've also never sold something that didn't have an animal on the front of it. So this is a train graphic which I think is really cute. So this would probably go somewhere between $15 and $18. I think I have it listed at $20. The kids t-shirts at the store were $0.99 cents, so I'm like I can't walk by a mountain t-shirt and not grab it. What do you think of this piece? What kind of vibes does it give you? Like somebody asked me too, you say this gives you certain vibes. What do you mean by that? When I say this gives me bohemian vibes or it gives me Johnny Was vibes, it just means it reminds me of that brand. Like I get a feeling when I look at it and that's what it reminds me of. So when I saw this at quick glance, it kind of gave me like Farm Rio meets Johnny Was vibes. And I was like, this is a really nice piece. And I was very shocked to see that it was Coldwater Creek. So I was looking at it and I'm like, I'm going to get this. This is like a, len a linen blend and then it has these like rayon sleeves. I loved the mixed pattern. I love the polka dots in the center. Really beautiful for spring. It's a tunic, which I love to carry. I sell them very well. It's a size large. It had so much going for it. And then I noticed that it was also new with tag and the price tag on it was $128. So this was a complete no-brainer. I think this is beautiful. I have this priced at $60. So I started it at less than half off the new with tag price and I'm hoping this goes for about 50. I'm gonna hold on it for a little while to see how it does. I don't think this is really typical Coldwater Creek. I was really excited about it. I think it should do well. Next up is a new to me brand. Taking a little chance on this one, but oh gosh, if you could feel this, it is, it is gorgeous. I was gonna say it's like silk because it is silk. It's a cashmere silk blend and it's just one of these super basic I don't want to get like lipstick or makeup anywhere near it it's a super simple layering piece this would be great with a blazer it would be great um, just with a pair of jeans I feel like this piece what you could do with it is endless there are so many possibilities the brand I had never heard of it's Frank Namani Paris so there there's the tag, Frank Namani. Absolutely gorgeous. And I think it's 70% cashmere, 30% silk, made in Italy. Frank Namani, Paris, gorgeous. Let me know in the comments if you've ever heard of this brand. There aren't many listed on Poshmark. I don't know if this is the type of sweater that might do better on eBay. Let me know if you've heard of this brand and if you've had any experience. Very basic, this is not the type of thing I would typically pick up, but given the fabric and you know, I love to do research on new brands, so we'll see how that does. I did take a little bit of a chance with this, but she only charged me $5. I've had mixed success with Victoria's Secret Country. I've had some vintage country pieces that have done amazing. I don't know how vintage this is because this tag doesn't look that old, but I'm, I'm, it's not a gold tag or anything. This is a one piece navy blue jumper, jumpsuit, because it's it's got pants. And I think this is just so adorable. There are a few available. I haven't seen many sold comps and I've seen this listed for 60. I've seen it listed for 38. I will probably list it for 45 because I had a two piece version of this in like an evergreen, but it was, it screamed Christmas. And I felt like the two pieces, it was a little more matronly looking. I feel like people could be really playful with this. It's just like a one piece. I love the navy blue. Otherwise, it's almost identical to the, the velvet and the little detailing with the flower embroidered on the pocket. So very similar in that respect. Same collar, but I just thought this was so cute and it's navy blue and I think somebody would love it. It's actually gathered a little bit in the back. So if you wanted to show a little waist, it is a size small. Let me know if you have success with 
Victoria's Secret Country or if you've ever sold one of their velvet pieces. I thought this was a unique piece, so for $5, I figured I'd give it a try. This was a piece I bought for myself. What did they price this at? This was priced at just $2.99, and it was new with tag. Um, it's just vegan leather. It's called Class Ladder or Glass Ladder Company. This is just a tech accessory pocket. It has the tag right inside. It retailed for just $35. So for $2.99, I thought this was really cute for me if I ever like if I'm ever back at cafes and working and I need to bring my laptop in my tote bag I can include all of my accessories in here my chargers has a little pocket here I could probably put my airpods in here and then it just folds up and then it ties around and just easy just to bring on the go with me so this is really cute if I don't end up using it I would probably list it for about $25 $10 off of the retail I have two vintage pieces at the end of this that are in my opinion showstoppers I'm so excited to share them with you but I have a few other pieces that I want to share before we get there this is a cropped wide leg velvet spaghetti strap jumper by J Crew and I have this listed at $75. The comps on these were pretty promising. This is J Crew 365. I'm hoping to get about $50 for that piece. The only downside is that I feel like it's more fall with the golden color. I feel like this was a very fall haul even though we're in the dead of winter. But because they're wide leg cropped and because it's got the spaghetti straps here, I really feel like that could really push close to uh, right through spring. I think we'd be great with that. So hope somebody scoops that up. So this is the group Babaton, which is an Aritzia brand. And this is also a 1X. I was really discouraged. I grabbed it, scooped it up right away without even looking at it. Then as I was going through, I noticed that it had some real excessive pilling. They charged me for a robe for this. So they only charged me $5, same as they charged me for the Victoria's Secret piece. So for $5, I thought it is a 1X. Some of the comps on these were like $60, $70 sold comps. So I thought I am gonna take a chance on this. I just bought a new sweater shaver and it's cordless and I really like it. I bought the same sweater shaver two times over and it worked so well. However, the cord on two occasions ended up twisting to the point that it disconnected from the insert from the plug and you know unless I want to replace the cord it doesn't work and it was like a $35 sweater shaver that is still like the best one I've ever used as far as like precision and really doing a great job but the one that I just recently bought has been awesome and it's handheld and you can charge it into a USB port so I'll link that in below if you want to check it out uh, and it was pretty inexpensive I think it was under $20 I did get some footage of me shaving this and it came out really nice so I was really happy with the results on this especially because this is a 1x and I like to carry items that are bigger in my closet especially in brands such as Aritzia to have something in a larger size is fantastic because I feel like most of the stuff that I find from Aritzia that ends up in my closet is usually a smaller size the next two items I don't know if I'm gonna sell I say that they are literally both listed but I love them so much. They are so up my alley. This is a Walter Baker. It's called the Tulum Caftan in a tropical print. And the MSRP on this was $198. And this is a long floral, you know how I love black floral, caftan. It is just so gorgeous. We are probably going to Florida in May, and I just think that this would just be stunning. There are a lot listed. Um, I have mine listed at $90, and I'm gonna hold on to that kind of tight because I want this. <laughs> and so if May comes around, I just think this would look so beautiful poolside in Naples, right? My husband has to go for work, and um, I have family down there who I want to visit as well. There was a lot from this haul that I wanted to keep for myself, but I usually list it and if it sells for good money, I just let it go. And if it doesn't sell and I need it and the occasion comes up, then I will grab it and just remove it from my closet, which is the perk of being a reseller. So this is another cover up and it's another thing that is so much my style. I'm actually more into shorter lengths than longer lengths, but this is by the brand Sea Folly, which is also a very expensive brand, but the resale on this is kind of mixed, but there's the tag, if you can see it. Sea Folly, and this still has this little tag. This is probably new without tag. 
although I will mark it as pre-owned. It has these adorable little silver tassels right at the collar, and then it has this beautiful detail. It also has a belt, so you can cinch it or just wear it open. I think it's so adorable. You could also just wear this with a tank top underneath and leggings if you felt comfortable with that, if you wanted to wear it like a tunic. I feel like these pieces are so versatile and I love them. One more thing before we hit the vintage Holy Grail items. This is a maxi skirt from Free People. I, um, somebody just asked me if the waist was adjustable so I was playing around with it a little bit because it does have two buttons but you have to keep it on the smaller buttonhole because there's a huge slit in the front. It's actually split up the front. Um, it's this great bohemian skirt, kind of gauzy, almost like a very subtle plaid pattern in the back and it has a belt. Oh, it's so pretty. Um, but this is, it splits right open. This is what I was um, looking at. So there are two buttons here. So you can unbutton it, but if you open it up, you know, you would literally be exposing yourself because this only overlaps by probably four or five inches. And then underneath it has like this little, it's not quite a skirt because it doesn't close, but it's got this liner to cover your bum. And yeah, it's just such a gorgeous skirt. I have this listed for $50. I think it's a really versatile piece. It will look great with some flip flops and a tank top in the summer. Love it so much. Okay. Now for the two pieces that I'm the most excited about, I would say from a value standpoint. And gosh, I, I don't even realize, I don't think I realized how special they were while I was shopping. This was in the children's section and it does say 13 on it, um, but it has very long sleeves. So I feel like it could work as like a crop sweater for somebody who's like an extra small. Um, but this is Salzburg. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Lawns of Salzburg, but I sell their pajamas all the time. They are a very um, modest, almost like Laura Ingalls looking nightgown that goes right to your ankles. It's a long flannel and it usually has like a little floral, little dot, very feminine looking, some ruffles around the collar. I've sold probably three or four of those nightgowns. Every time I find them, if, if it's the right season and it's the right price, I'll pick them up. They always flip for about 20 to $30. It's been a while since I've sold one. Anyways, this is that company and this is a vintage sweater and it has like this popcorn detail on the sides. And then I'm gonna show you the tag because I think the tag is amazing. And it says right here, Phyllis Ross. So I don't know if that was the little girl's name who owned this and it was just stitched in, or if that has something to do with the design, I really don't know. But I have to research this a little bit more, but I consulted my friend, Laura, um, who is Laura Von V on YouTube. If you're not following Laura, she is fantastic. And I learned so much about vintage from Laura. Whenever I have a vintage question, she's one of the first people I reach out to. And she said that this was kind of like the it sweater a couple years ago. She was pretty confident I could get north of hundred dollars for this, which I was so shocked because I walked by this and I was, it was the kids section. And I was like, that is really interesting. Like the popcorn detail on it. I don't know where I'm gonna start this, maybe 150. There are a few spots that I need to work on. No, maybe I got them out. No, there's just these two little, I mean, they're very minor little dots here, but they're kind of hard. So I think if I soak this a little bit, that's something that should hopefully just come right out. How cool is this? My question is, I don't know if I should mark it as a women's sweater and put it as like an extra small, or if I should list it in kids. It says 13. I'm assuming that's age 13. I get so excited about good vintage. These are some samples of some current listings on this style of sweater and brand, ranging from $62 all the way up to $280. So that was a kid's sweater. I think I paid $3 for that, $2.99. This I actually paid up for. This is vintage Salvatore Ferragamo, and it is stunning. It is this peplum style jacket. And when I went online, there were one or two of these listed and they were listed really high. I wanna say like over $400 and it was a different color. 
This is something I would potentially send to the real real because as much as the real real prices certain things really low, when I looked at their wool jackets for Salvatore Ferragamo, I feel like something unique like this, they would price higher. But I, I it's already listed in my closet. I think I started it at $349 which obviously I would take offers. I paid $15 for this. One of the things I read advertised it as a jacket dress. Now, I don't know if somebody could wear this without something underneath it, but I mean, I suppose it is just so well made. I am obsessed with the sleeves on this and look at the detail on the back. Just such a flattering cut. It also has pockets. As far as flaws go, I noticed that right here, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. It looked like it may have been the start of a moth hole and somebody stitched like a, the tiniest of stitches. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right around this area. I have a bright light in my eye, so I can't really see. Other than that, this jacket is in such great condition. It is a size six and made in Italy, 100% wool. And it's, there's the Salvatore Ferragamo. It's a little wrinkled, so. But isn't this stunning? This jacket is just gorgeous. This is also something I would definitely put on my mannequin because when I was looking and researching, I saw this coat just on its own on hanger like this and then i saw it on a mannequin and i was so impressed with the difference the mannequin made uh, there are definitely pieces that are so worth taking the extra time to put on a mannequin because just like models can sell a piece a mannequin can actually really help you out with that if, if it's a size that doesn't fit you but it's it has a beautiful shape like this it might be worth putting it on a mannequin to see. That wraps up my haul for today. It was so nice to be back in the thrift store. I took my time, I went to a few different spots, and I didn't get a ton of stuff, but this is a perfect example of going to the thrift store and coming home and being very, very excited to list everything. And I literally hung everything up, I started steaming things, I started researching, I put everything into Vendu, which is now my, which has replaced my spreadsheet, which has been such a great transition for me. So I came home and I just started doing my research and doing all my descriptions so that by the time Caitlin and I got to the point where we were taking pictures, Caitlin is my assistant, my high school student who comes about six to eight hours, eight, nine hours a week. By the time we got to taking pictures, once the pictures and the measurements were in, I was like, boom, 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 boom. I just made everything go live because I was so happy to come home and get these listed. I didn't have any projects that needed soaking or mending or stain treatment or anything like that. Like everything was ready to go. The lawns sweater might need a little attention on the sleeve, but if not, I could just list that as is, and I don't think it will really affect the price too much because that's minimal, um, minimal damage. That's all for today. If you had a good time, please give this video a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to my channel. Also, if you haven't checked out my new channel, it is called Time with Tata. My last name is Tata, and I started a lifestyle channel. So if you wanna check that out, I'll link it right up here for you. Um, I already have one or two videos already uploaded for that channel. I hope you enjoy the different style over there. I'm having fun with it. I also want to thank Vendu one more time for sponsoring today's video. Remember to click the link in my description to receive 25% off your first month with Vendu. That's all for today. I'm back to work now. I don't think I'm going to go thrifting again until the end of the month. Thanks so much for watching. I'll be back real soon. Bye.